Hi and welcome to this Leaving Cert Higher Level Complex Number video where we're looking at polar form. If you want to look at the introduction to complex numbers and how to work with it in rectangular form, I've linked the video in the description below. So complex number in polar forms. So when we have a complex number in the form of a plus bi, this is called rectangular form. We can easily plot this on the Argon diagram. Uh, there is a second way to write the complex number, and this is known as polar form. So here's two examples. So rectangular form minus 2 minus 2i, two polar form, 2 root 2 bracket, cos of 5 pi over 4 plus i sine 5 pi over 4. But don't panic, we're going to go deeper into where that comes from and what it represents. So how do we find the polar form of a complex number? So we need two things in particular. The first is the modulus of the complex number, which we use these straight lines to show, and that is equal to or. This is the distance from the origin to the complex number, and is found using this formula here. This is a formula you need to know off by heart. And the second thing we need to know is the argument of the complex number. I write that as a or a g bracket z, the argument of z, z being the complex number, and that's usually represented by theta because it's an angle. So this is the angle from the positive real axis, axis to the complex number itself. It can be found using this formula, which is the argument of z is equal to theta, or equal to the tan inverse of b over a. Don't worry, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail. So the polar form of a complex number is given as z is equal to or bracket cos of theta plus i sine of theta, where or, remember we said, was the modulus, and theta is that argument, that angle. So conventionally, uh, theta is usually between minus pi and pi. However, um, if the question doesn't specify or does not require polar form as your answer, you can use degrees or radians. Uh, you also don't have to use negative angles if you don't want to. You can keep them all positive. There is no problem. We're quite loose in how this is asked with regards to the leaving cert questions. Most of the more recent questions, they are kind of moving away from forcing students to use for uh, forcing students to use radians. So um, you're absolutely fine, like I said, to use obtuse angles in quadrant three and quadrant uh, four rather than the positive and negative. Whatever you like, whatever works best for you. So what are negative angles? Now, not everybody will learn negative angles, and I suppose it depends on your teacher what exactly you will have encountered. Um, it's important, I think, to understand even that negative angles exist. And before we really even talk about negative angles, think about negative in general. If I talk about a negative number, it means that I'm going the opposite way on the number line. So negative really shows direction. So a negative angle is an angle that's measured in a different direction. So for example, this is a negative angle. It's measured clockwise. Usually our angles are measured uh, anti-clockwise like this, and that is called a positive angle. So if I was looking at an example like this, that is 40 degrees, but it's a negative 40 degrees because of how I measured it. If we think in degrees, that's the same as a positive 320. So the idea is that if I said to you plus 320 or minus 40 degrees, we would end up at the same place. In terms of radians, think it can be written as minus pi over 4, which means minus 40 degrees, or we could take that away from 360 or 2 pi in terms of radians, and our answer would also be 7 pi over 4. Either is absolutely fine. Example 1, polar form to rectangular form. So we've been given two complex numbers here. Both of these are in polar form, and we're being asked to change it back to rectangular form. So that's in the form x plus iy. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our calculators or page 13, um, if the angles exist on page 13, to help us work out what is cos of pi over 6 and sine of pi over 6. Now, I prefer using page 13 where I can, and I'll always have it open if I'm doing anything based in trigonometry or in this section of complex numbers where we're working with trigonometry as well. So pi over 6 in radians, remember these are all... Um, all these angles are measured in radians. The hint is that it has the pi. I like page 13 because it helps me 
convert that very quickly to degrees and understand it in a different way. So pi over six, you can very quickly see that that's 30 degrees. The cause of that is root three over two. And then sine of pi over six is a half. Um, sorry now, so root three over two plus i, and then we have a half. We are gonna multiply in that 12, which gives us six root three plus six i, and that's our final answer. For part b, we have five bracket cos of pi over eight plus i sine pi over eight. Now pi over eight, that is not in our log tables. So we're gonna to have to use our calculators to do that. When we're working with our calculators, make sure that you're in radian mode. Always double check that before you um, do anything. Are you working in degrees? Are you working in radians? And is your calculator in the right form? So here we have cos of pi over eight. So that works out 0 0.9238 plus i sine of pi over eight. So into the calculator again, and we'll work with sine. And that works out as 0 0.382683, and it keeps going. We're going to multiply both those by 5, and we end up with about 1.9i, 0.923845, and um, that works out about 4.6. So we have 4.6 plus 1.9i. If you want in these questions where you have to use your calculator, you can, as an alternative, multiply in that 5. So it becomes 5 cos pi over 8 and then plus i, 5 sine pi over 8. Now, why that's helpful if you have to use your calculator is you can go straight to this piece and this piece in your calculator without having to do the step in between, without having to get it and then multiply it by five. And we should get the same answer. This very quickly gives me the 4.6 plus, and if we go back and change this to sine, we end up with our 1.9i. So it's just a little bit quicker. Um, I'm not a fan of writing out decimals, so if I do get a decimal answer, I'm, I find I don't like writing out chance I'll transcribe something wrong. If this was in an exam question as well, they would advise us if we needed to round it. Example two, rectangular form to polar form. So this is very, very important. It's a little bit trickier than moving from rectangular form to polar form. Um, it's really important that you know how to do this because we need polar form to basically work quite complex or complicated um, operations on complex numbers. So things like powers and even multiplying and dividing. Um, we have some shortcuts when we can work in polar form. So that's the importance of polar form. So in order to find a complex number in polar form, the first thing we, we are going to do is we're going to find the modulus. So the modulus is given by OR and you need to know that formula. It's the real part squared plus the coefficient of the imaginary part squared. That can go straight into your calculator and we'll get our answer of or equals two. The second thing we're going to look at is the argument, which is the angle. Now the angle is given by theta and we need to sketch that out in order for us to be able to understand what's happening with regards um, the signs, we need to think about our unit circle and so on. Let me just put my two up here out of the way. So I'm going to sketch this out and really I need to focus on where would I plot that complex number. So minus one plus i root three, it's going to be over here in that second quadrant, which means my argument is going to be this angle here, which is theta. So I don't generally work with obtuse angles. Instead, we work with a smaller angle, which in trigonometry we would have called our reference angle. So I'm going to work out that reference angle and use the reference angle to figure out the argument. So to get the reference angle A, I'm going to work out the tan of it using the complex number. 
So because that complex number, if you think where it is, there is root three, here is minus one. Um, so in terms of tan, it is root three over one. Don't worry about the sign because it's acute, so it's going to be positive. So that means A is going to be, now I'm going to work in radians. It didn't specify whether this should be radians or degrees. They will be very clear in an exam. So I'm going to work kind of both simultaneously, but really focusing on radians. So I'm on page 13 rather than using um, my calculator that allows me not only to do radians quite quickly, but also to include the degrees. Where um, I have the tan of an angle equal to root 3, it is pi over 3, or in degrees, that's 60 degrees. So then I need to understand, well, my argument is going to be, and sometimes students find it easier to think in degrees here first, it's 180 degrees minus that reference angle A, which would be 180 degrees minus 60. So my argument is 120 degrees. Now I can do the exact same thing in radians. So in radians, 180 degrees, again, have page 13 open in front of you. That's pi, take away pi over three. You can use your calculator to help you do that if needs be. Really, it's one take away a third. So it's two thirds, but two pi over three, because we're talking about pi's. Um, so that's my argument. So now I can write my complex number in the form or bracket cos theta plus i sine theta and that will be two bracket cos of pi over three plus i sine pi over three if we want to talk about radians or if you prefer degrees cos of 60 no sorry cos of oh i've used the wrong angle here sorry so it's my theta, so that should have been 2 pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And then degrees, it's 120 degrees plus I sine 120 degrees. Okay, so what I would recommend is that you're able to work both ways. I think degrees, if you can work in radians, you'll work in degrees. While you're getting started, I would definitely try to work in radians. And like I've done here, maybe in a different color, put in the degrees. So you can get a better sense of radians to degrees and how they link together and really using that page 13. So let's try another one from rectangular form to polar form. Write the complex number one minus i root three in modulus argument form. So that's another way that they could ask us. So we need to know that that means writing it as or bracket cos of theta plus i sine of theta. We will look at a theorem in a few examples time and we'll see that actually we can use something in the log tables to help us um, get that polar form in case you think you might forget it, that there is something in the log tables that might help. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work out my modulus. Remember my modulus is or, I need to know that formula. That is the square root of 1 squared plus, now it is really minus root 3 squared, but it won't make a difference because um, we're squaring it, so it's going to end up positive anyway. So this gives me a final answer of 2. The second part we need to work out is the argument. So here we have 1 minus root 3i. So we're down here. Now, this is interesting because I've talked about negative numbers, or sorry, well, I've talked about negative angles, and here is somewhere where we can do it. So I'm going to try work with our negatives here, just so you can get a sense of how we could do it. Absolutely fine to use the reflex angle, that's not an issue. I'm actually going to give my argument as this which is negative rather than the positive angle, which would then be reflex. So my argument here is theta and it is the same as my reference angle. Okay, so it's the same as my reference angle. I just need to think that it's negative. So my answer is going to be, well, theta is equal to, now remember we're using tan, so I need to understand where am I? I'm here at minus root three, I'm across at one. So my tan of the argument 
the tan of theta will be at root 3 over 1, which means theta is going to end up being um, pi over 3. But because we're going anti-clockwise, so that's important. So anti-clockwise, that means we are dealing with a negative angle. Okay, so that is minus pi over 3. So we would end up with an answer of 2 cos of minus pi over 3 plus i sine minus pi over 3. Now, if you're kind of going, oh, I'm not sure about negative angles, that's absolutely fine. Let me show you a second way we could work that argument. So with using our positive angles I'm going to stick to radians and um, so my argument here it's still the same complex number but this time I'm going to focus here for theta now I can't work with that so instead I work with my reference angle that's here so the tan of my reference angle a is pi or sorry, root 3 over 1, which means my reference angle is pi over 3. If you want a bit of help with that, that's 60 degrees. So I know that if I wanted to work out theta, theta is going to be 360, take away my angle. So that means 360, take away 60, which is 300 degrees. I always think it's easier to kind of focus our brains on the degrees and then we can kind of convert it as such to radians. So 360 is 2 pi. You can use your cal calculator to do that or you can look page 13 again so easy if you've page 13 open 180 is pi so 360 is 2 pi take away a which is pi over 3 it's really 2 take away a third so we have 5 pi over 3 but again you can use your calculator to do that this then gives us 2 cos of 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3 now we've never seen them specify in an exam to have the angle in a specific way, i.e. negative or positive. And um, I wouldn't get too wound up about this. Really, the, the good practice widely observed in maths in general would be to use the negative angles. So the angle between minus pi and pi, but it depends. So there's no issue working with these reflex angles if you're okay with it. I like negative angles because they're a lot less work. There's a lot less calculations. You'll see two lines and a little bit of thinking versus a lot more work if we were working with the reflex angles. So I actually think overall negative angles are a little bit easier but that's a personal opinion but I want you to see it so you can make an informed decision so you're not just saying oh negative angles they must be difficult not necessarily so example four let's look at another question where we're working from rectangular form to polar form first thing I want to do is the modulus what you hopefully have noticed by now is that the numbers have stayed the same. So there has been a root three and a one. Now, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. But what that means is when we work out the modulus, it has worked out the same for each of them. So you can put in your minus there if you want, but it shouldn't affect anything. Now, we need to be careful here with our argument because they have flipped the numbers. The root three is the real part now. Um, so the argument is going to be minus root 3 minus i, so it's here. So you have two options. We can go negative or we can go positive. I'm going to try our negative again. Now here it's a little bit more work than the last one. I need to still use a reference angle, which I didn't need to the last time. And that reference angle is always less than 90 degrees. So it's the acute angle that we use to get all the other angles. So think back to your unit circle. So here I have A and I, if I was plotting this, there's my root 3 and there's my minus 1. So my tan of that angle, the tan of A is, now think of where A is, I know it's not well marked, but there's A. So why are I getting that tan? It's the opposite over adjacent, so 1 over root 3. So A, again, I'm using my log tables here. Um, so we have tan of some angle equals 1 over root 3, so it's 30 degrees, or pi over 6. 
so that's 30 degrees. Now I want to work with the argument. So to get the argument, I think any time we're doing any kind of work with the angle. So when we bring in that A, that reference angle, it's always helpful to have degrees there because I know that theta is going to be 180 degrees take away A. And I can see that quite quickly from my from my um, diagram. Um, going straight to radians can lead to problems. So work in degrees if you have to, and then whatever you've done in degrees, you can do in radians. Eventually, you'll get to the point where you won't need to do that, where you'll go straight in at radians, and that's great, but you need to build up to that. You may have met these already. Uh, well, hopefully you've met these already in trigonometry, so maybe you weren't a fan of radians. Now you're meeting them again. And maybe this is the time to really put in the work with them. So I have 1 minus a sixth, which is 5 pi over 6. Or again, use your calculator there to help you. However, remember, we are talking about negative angles because we're moving anti-clockwise. So really, all of these angles should have been minus. So minus but I'm not going to get too complicated with putting in my minuses too early on and the reason is they might mess up your calculation so just at the very end you need to just make sure that you put in that this is a negative angle so minus 5 pi over 6 so my modulus will be 2 and then I have cos of minus 5 pi over 6 plus I sine minus five over six and um, you could show that as like a mi so a minus sorry what have I done 30 from 180 150 apologies so you could show that as a minus 150 degrees either so two bracket cos of minus 150 degrees plus I sign we don't usually use negative with degrees um, but I suppose if you think about where that is, 180 plus 30, so if you wanted to do that as a positive angle, that's going to be cos of 210 plus I sine 210. So all those valid, valid answers, depending on exactly how you want to work. It's really, really important, and I know I've said this a few times, that you understand this and how to get to polar form before moving on because everything else relies on you being very very quick and very very good at changing from rectangular form to polar form. So let's talk about some shortcuts we have for multiplying and dividing complex numbers when they're in polar form. So um, this can be very useful and it links us nicely um, into a theorem that we're going to use for powers as well. So if I want to multiply two complex numbers that are in polar form, you can see it here, or one cos A plus I sine A and or two cos B plus I sine B. You can work it through and work it out and bring it back um, and do a little bit of your trigonometric identities on it. But what you'll find is you can multiply the modulus together and you can add the arguments. And then dividing works the same way. You can simply divide the arguments, sorry, divide the modulus and then subtract the arguments. So the angles, so A minus B. Now these are not in the log tables, but they are definitely formula that I would know how to use them. Not necessarily need to know these off by heart. So in the next example, make sure you're clear on how or what you need to know if you were to do that in an exam situation. So here's an example of dividing and multiplying um, in polar form. So two parts of the question, we've been given Z1 and Z2, both of these complex numbers in polar form. And in the first part of the question, they want us to multiply them. So in order to multiply Z1, Z2, we multiply um, the modulus of Z1 times the modulus of Z2. Then, we add the argument. So it's cos of pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 12 plus I sine, and it's going to be the exact same angle because these angles should always match 5 pi over 12. And we are going to clean that up, tidy that up. So 
2 times 5 is 10. And then we get cos of, now you can use your calculators to help you do this. Um, so pi over 4 plus 5 pi over 12. It does simplify down to 2 pi over 3. And I'm actually going to take out that bracket. Um, and the same should happen here. So 2 pi over 3. We actually want our answer in the form a plus ib. So I'm going to now have to use my calculator to figure out the cos of 2 pi over 3 and I sine 2 pi over 3 and then multiply it by 10. Um, or as I've shown before, you can go straight to maybe 10 cos of 2 pi over 3 plus i and then do 10 sine 2 pi over 3 just to save you putting into your calculator a few times. And just make sure your calculator is in radian mode when you're doing this um, and you should be absolutely fine. So get into the habit of checking that radian mode. Um, it's usually quite obvious on your calculator, so just double check the OR for radians is there, or ORAD if you're using a sharp calculator. So I get minus 5, and then we have I, which is sine, so plus I, 5 root 3. So um, obviously with multiplication, you might say, well, it might be easier if they were given in rectangular form, so that A plus I B, just to multiply them as that. But when they are in polar form, this is much more straightforward. So now let's look at division. So we're often asked to divide complex numbers because when they're in rectangular form, we need to use the conjugate. Um, so this is another way you could always change them to polar form and then use the shortcut for division. Um, much of a muchness, I would say, and um, you'd really have to hate working with them in rectangular form. But in the case where we are given them in polar form, we need to be able to work with them in, in polar form. So we have Z2 divided by Z1. So we have the modulus of Z2 divided by the modulus of Z1. Then we are going to subtract the arguments. Make sure you subtract them in the right order. It's going to be the argument of Z2 subtract the argument of Z1 because that's the order we're dividing in. So 5 pi over 12 take away pi over 4 plus I sine 5 pi, it's a 5 over 12 minus pi over 4. And you can change that to decimal, but I'm going to leave that as a fraction while we tidy it up. And this simplifies down. Again, you can use your calculator if you want, but it should be pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. Um, you can use your log tables here because pi over 6, 30 degrees, is in the log tables. So that is 5 over 2 cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 plus i sine of pi over 6 is a half. So i times a half or a half i. And if we want to work that through, we get 5 root 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4 i. And that's our final answer. So knowing how to work with this, so multiplication means you multiply the modulus of the first by the modulus of the second, and then you add the arguments. If you even know that one, division being the opposite of multiplication works the opposite way. So where you multiply, you divide. Where you add, you subtract. So let's talk about De Mauver's theorem. De Mauver's theorem is a very important theorem and the actual formula got to do with that is available on page 20 of the log tables. Now we really only care about this part. The second part is not required um, for us at Leaving Cert. Okay, so basically um, this guy De Mauver, he's accredited for this and the formula is named after him, but actually it was never 
explicitly stated in any of his work. Um, it's hugely important because what it does is it really connects complex numbers to trigonometry. And that connection is huge. Um, you are required to know the proof of this theorem. It is a proof by induction. I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I am going to link the proof by induction video below if you do want to go through that proof. Basically, it allows us to get a complex number to a given power, and it shows us that if I want to give a complex number to a power, n, then it is or to the power of n, so the modulus to the power of n, cos n theta, so the power goes in front of the argument in both the cos and the sine piece. So let's look at actually how we could use that. Example six, find uh, the value of cos of pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6 all to the power of 3. So we're going to use Demover's theorem for this. There is no modulus here, so no number in front, but really that's a 1. We don't have to worry about that because if I put that 1 to any power, it will stay at 1. So I don't need to worry about that. But what I do need to bring is that 3 down in front of the angle. So it becomes cos of 3 pi over 6 plus i sine 3 pi over 6. Now, um, you can simplify that or you can go straight to your calculator at that point. So it's pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. I like to work with this and go to my page 13 where pi over 2 we can see is 90 degrees. For cos of pi over 2, that's 0 plus i sine of pi over 2, it's i times 1. So my final answer for that is simply i. I'm not writing that as a complex number, we're just simply looking for it as an answer. So my answer is i. Example 7, write 1 plus root 3i in polar form and hence find the value of 1 plus root 3i all to the power of 9. So when we want to use demovers to expand the bracket to a power, it needs to be in polar form. So often we see this as a starting point of a question where we need to use demovers theorem. So the first thing we want to figure out is the modulus. So let's work out the modulus of this complex number. That is or, and that's the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared, which works out as 2. The second thing we want to work out is the argument. So the argument is the angle. So the first thing I'm going to do to get the argument is sketch it. 1 plus root 3i. So I'm up here in this quadrant. Here is my argument there. So I'm going to call my argument theta. So here is my angle theta. To get theta, I can look at the tan. So the tan of that angle is going to be the imaginary part over the real part. So that's just the tan of theta equals root 3. Now, again, I have, root, I have my page 13 open to help me with this. So very quickly that I can see this without touching my calculator that theta is pi over uh, 3 if we want to work in radians. If you want to work in degrees, we are talking about 60 degrees. Do you have to work in radians? No, because we're going to find a final value. So it's absolutely fine in a question like this to work in degrees because we won't need to give our answer in polar form. So now that I have my modulus and my argument, we're going to write in we're going to write that complex number as or cos theta plus i sine theta, which is 2 bracket cos of pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3. Again, if you're not a fan of radians and want to work in degrees, it will look like this, cos of 60 degrees plus i sine 60 degrees. Now what we want to do is we want to take that and put it to the power of 9. So let's put this to the power of 9. I'm putting this to the power of 9 or here to the power of 9. Method is the same. So what I'm going to do is I have 2 to the power of 9 and then the 9 goes in front of the angle. So it becomes 9 pi over 3 plus I sine 9 pi over 3. 
Um, you can simplify that down. Before I do, I'm going to write this with the degrees as well, just for us to get an idea. So it's 9 times 60 plus I sine 9 times 60. Um, it can be helpful as you're starting these if you want to work both at the same time. It'll help you really understand radians a little bit better because everything you do in radians, you're also doing in degrees. So it'll, you'll, you'll kind of cement that connection. So in our calculators, let's do 2 to the power of 9. We need it for both. So that works out as 512 bracket. Now, I like working in radians. Um, I get 3 pi plus I sine 3 pi. Um, I know 3 pi has gone over 360 degrees um, because 2 pi is 360 degrees. But if you prefer, you can write this as 540 degrees and work from there. You can bring it back absolutely to um, within the 360 degrees. That's how I would work it. So we're going to have 512 times cos of, now I take away a rotation. So I take away two pi. So I'm left with simply pi plus I sine pi. Now why I've done that is because I can now look up pi on page 13. I could have gone straight to my calculator and put in 3 pi. There is absolutely no issue at all. So by doing that, I get 512 bracket cos of pi is minus 1 plus I sine of pi is 0. And when I multiply zero by the I, I'm left with zero. So my final answer is minus 512. If you want to work in degrees, we would have had the same idea. 540 is over 360, so I take away a rotation. So it's the cos of 180 degrees plus I sine 180 degrees. And we would have ended up with exact same answer. So minus one plus I times zero, which gives me 512 times minus one, which is simply 512, which is the value. So in green there, it's all the workings in degrees, um, but I've kept my workings in radians. In a question like this, as I've already said, you could work in either since we're only focusing on our final answer. There may be questions where you have to work in radians, which is why I always suggest that students practice working in radians. Example 8, simplifying expressions of the form cos of theta minus i sine theta all to the power of n. So our question here is simplify the cos of pi over 3 minus i sine pi over 3 all to the power of 6. So at this point you might be thinking, oh we can go and apply to Mover's theorem straight away, but actually because there's a minus here, we're going to need to do a little bit of work. So note the polar form will be the cos of the argument plus I sine of the argument. So it's always going to be a plus and that will never change. <clears throat> so there's a few ways where we can approach this question. Um, and I'm gonna start off by looking at what this means. So we're gonna use a unit circle. And with our unit circle, we have quadrant one, two, three, and four. And then whatever way you use to remember what is positive in each quadrant. So cos is positive, all are positive, sine is positive, and tan is positive. So in this scenario here, cos is positive, but sine is negative. So we're wondering which quadrant does this sit in? And that will sit down here in the fourth quadrant. It is given us then an acute angle pi over three. So what we are being given is this angle here, which we can call A, which will be the reference angle. So that's pi over three. So that's what they've given us. So to make a true polar form, and I'm gonna use positive angles here, we want to understand the argument moving this way. So this would be theta. So we need to understand the large reflex angle rather than the small um, reference angle that we've been given here. So if we were looking for the argument, and I'm going to work in radians, but if you need to work in degrees, I'll work alongside of it. So the argument um, that we're going to have here 
If I think in degrees, it would be 360 degrees. Take away this angle, which in degrees is 60 degrees. And that will give us 300. But we're working in radians. So if you have page 13 open in front of you, you can do these conversions quite quickly. 360 degrees, that's 2 pi. Take away the angle which we have, which is pi over 3. And that is 5 pi over 3. And that's what gives us theta, the argument. So this, although not polar form, is giving us a similar form, which would also have an or, so the modulus in front of it. So that would be a 1. So we don't have to worry about that. That won't change. So if we think then in polar form, it's simply going to be cos of 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. You could also use negative angles here if that's the way you'd like to go. So now that I have this in polar form, what we can do is we can use De Mover's theorem to convert cos of 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3 all to the power of 6 into something just a little bit more manageable. De Mover's, <coughs> excuse me, De Mover's theorem, which is found on page 20 of your log tables, tells us to simply multiply the angle by the power. And that's also coming from our shortcut of multiplying complex numbers when they're in polar form. So that's 6 times 5 pi over 3. And when we work that through, that gives us, so we get a little bit of cancelling here, so that's a 2 and a 2. The angles should always match, so this will always tell you if you're on the right track. So I have cos of 10 pi plus I sine of 10 pi. Now, remember that we will be looking at this point to understand is theta, our angle, less than 2 pi. Because if it's 2 pi or bigger, we will have... Um, we'll have to take away one of our rotations to bring it back to an angle between 0 and 360 degrees or 0 and 2 pi if we're talking in radians. So in this case, 10 pi is most definitely over 2 pi. It's a number of rotations. I'm pointing this out here just so you remember to check your question and the answer before you present it. But I'm going to go back to the question we've actually been asked, and we've been asked for the answer in rectangular form. So actually, it won't make a difference for us because we're not going to leave it in this form. So if you would like, you can convert that. If you want to convert that, that is a multiple of 2 pi. So that means it will be equivalent to 2 pi. And that means 10 pi is actually the same as 0. So cos 0 plus i sine 0, and you can work it that way. Alternatively, what you can do is you can go to your calculator, make sure it's in radian mode, and type in cos of 10 pi, and we should get 1, plus i sine 10 pi, and that's i times 0, and that basically gives us our final answer of 1 plus 0 i. If you ask for rectangular form, I would include both the real part and the imaginary part, even if that imaginary or real part is 0. Example 9. So using De Mover's theorem, and this is a very um, <clears throat> unusual little question. It appeared as part of our syllabus, so it's actually outlined in the syllabus itself as an example. This question itself has come from a mock paper. So it is a little bit more complex than maybe other things we've seen, but it's a nice example, especially given that the department have specifically said, here is an example. <clears throat> So it gives us a big hint by saying use De Mover's theorem to prove. And we have this really quite bizarre looking thing because De Mover's theorem at this point we should know is all about complex numbers and expanding complex numbers to a given power. And there's no complex numbers here. So given that we have um, some thetas here and so on, we're going to start with the complex number cos of theta plus i sine theta. So I'm going to start with that. That seems like a good place to start. And we have power 3 
and some threes in here. So I'm thinking that actually we probably need to put a power three here if we're talking about them over. So we're going to have a power of some sort. Power three seems like it's the right way to go. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to expand this in two different ways. The first way is I'm going to use the movers theorem. So I'm going to come along and say that's the same of cos of 3 pi. Sorry, cos of 3 theta plus i sine of 3 theta. Very straightforward. So this is using the mover. The second way we're going to do is you can use either binomial expansion or you can multiply it out the, the long way. I'm going to use a binomial expansion. And binomial expansion is actually on the same page as de Mover's theorem, which is page 20 in your log tables. So we're going to do exactly the same sum, but just in a different way. So the cos of theta plus i sine theta, and we're going to do to the power of 3. So the expansion is n to 0, so that's 3 to 0, and it's going to be the first term, cos of theta, all to the power of n. So that's cos cubed theta. Plus 3 choose 1, and then that's going to be cos squared theta multiplied by i sine theta plus 3 choose 2 cos theta and it's going to be i sine theta all squared so just make sure that i is squared as well and the final term so remember there was always one extra term so power three we have four terms power five there'll be six terms and so on and we know that this um this binomial expansion is something we do a lot because the shortcut for squaring that you might do in your head, square the first, twice the first by the second, and then square the last, <coughs> it's coming from this binomial expansion. So the last piece is 3 choose 3. That's how I know I've got to the end. Uh, I can't go further than that. And it gives an i sine theta all to the power of 3. So we're going to tidy this up. So 3 choose 0 is 1, and that's just cos cubed theta. 3 choose 1 is 3 and that I'm going to just pull out the i in front um, so it doesn't get lost and then we have cos squared theta sine theta. Uh, 3 choose 2 is also 3. We then have i squared. I'm going to pull the i squared just out the front just so it doesn't get lost. It doesn't matter where it goes. It's all multiplication. So then that's cos theta sine squared theta. And the last piece plus 3 choose 3 is 1. And we get i cubed sine cubed theta. So I'm going to come along now and focus in on the i's to a power. So we should know at this point that i to a power bigger than 1 should never be written. It should then it should be converted. So I'm going to tidy this up a little bit more. So cos cubed theta plus, I'll leave that i out here, 3 cos squared theta sine theta. We know, we should know, that i squared is minus 1. So that's minus 3 cos theta sine squared theta. And then i cubed is actually minus i. So we get minus i sine theta cubed theta. Now, so now what we have is we have cos theta plus i sine theta to the power of 3 and we've expanded it in two different ways. With these kind of questions, when you've done anything, it's good to stop and look at what do you have and what do you want. So notice that we have, grab my highlighter, so up here we have sine of 3 theta and and I'm looking around, do I have that? And I do. I have that here. And then we're looking at 3 sine of theta. Mm, I don't have that. But sine, well, I have 4 sine cubed theta. I don't have a 4, but I do have sine cubed theta. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say, well, 
I've expanded in two different ways, but effectively my answer should be the same. So therefore the imaginary parts um, in both of my expansions, so demovers and binomial, they should be equal. Notice I even have that minus in front of the sine cube theta. So I'm going to say that the yellow in the first equation should be equal to the yellow in the second equation. So what that's going to look like, I'm basically going to say i sine 3 theta should equal i 3 cos squared theta sine theta minus i sine cubed theta. And then I'm going to cancel off those i's or ignore the i's, whatever way you want to think of it. And now I'm very, very close to getting, um, well, I'm very, very close to having the equation that they want me to prove. So this is good. I'm going to change color. So this is good. That's fine. Um, I think I'm happy with this as well. But really my focus is going to be on this part here and breaking it up into something a little bit more useful. I'm thinking from what's above, I'm going to try break it into a sine and then a sine cubed in some way um, so we can work with it. So let's clear the screen and move on. Okay, so we're focusing in on that uh, 3 cos squared theta, sine theta. I'm happy with the other two pieces. So I'm just going to rewrite this a little bit clearer. So I have sine of 3 theta is equal to 3 cos square theta sine of theta minus sine cubed theta. Um, we're focusing in and looking above and thinking, well, I currently have 3 cos square theta sine theta and up here I have a 3 sine theta. So is there something that we could replace this cos square theta with? Um, and if we go to the log tables on page 13, we have this little formula here. And this little formula isn't helpful straight away, but actually if we rearrange it, we can get a little formula that says the cos squared of an angle is 1 minus sine squared of an angle. And this, as a substitution, will help us with the right-hand side. So I'm going to replace this with 1 minus sine squared theta times sine of theta minus sine cubed theta and we get 3s sine theta so just be careful almost find 3 by the whole bracket by sine theta you can do 3 sine theta if you prefer to move it in front of it so I'm doing 3 by 1 by sine theta and 3 by minus sine squared theta by sine theta so that's minus 3 sine cubed theta minus sine squared cubed theta and then we can add our like terms which are these two pieces here so that is 3 sine theta minus 4 sine cubed theta and the left hand side has been the same we haven't touched it and that is exactly what they wanted us to show So the next thing we're going to look at is the general form of, um, sorry, the general polar form of a complex number. So we've seen the polar form of a complex number and now we're going to generalize it. And this is very much linked to the general solution that you would have done in trigonometry. So we're going to use the same method. So when we're using Demover's theorem to find the roots of a complex number, we're going to use this general polar form. And what this allows us to do is basically find more than just the single answer. So we would have seen this general solution when we were solving and um, looking for the angle in trigonometry, and we could find all the possible angles with that solution. So this is very much linked to what we've already done, and we're basically going to be adding in a rotation, and that rotation is 360 degrees, or 2 pi. So this is what we end up with. It looks very, very similar to the polar form. The only difference is our 2n pi added on. That could also be um, n times 360 if we're working in degrees. So this is the add-on. This is my rotation. 
and it's the general rotation. So if I add on 2 pi, I rotate it. 2 n pi is any number of rotations. So we would then sub in n is 0, and n is 1, and n is 2, and continue until we would have all the roots of the complex number. This idea of roots of the complex number, we're going to explore it in the next example. So looking for the nth root of a complex number. So they're asking us here to solve this equation. So in the very first instance, what we would tend to do is if I had z cubed equals 8i, we would work backwards and simply say, well, then z is the cubed root of 8i. Now, that's fine um, if 8i wasn't 8i and if that could go into the calculator, but that can't go into the calculator. So instead, the way we would write that is 8i to the power of a third. So remember that the cubed root is the power of a third, square root, power of a half, and so on. So that is what we basically end up with. Z is 8i to the power of a third. So what we have now is um, a complex number to a power. So this is a great place where we could apply De Moivre. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our 8i and we're going to change this to polar form. And more specifically than polar form, general polar form. Because if we can change that to general polar form, it allows us to get all the possible answers. And if we have z cubed, we will have three answers. If that was z to the power of five, there will be five answers, and so on. So first step, we are going to get general polar form, and then we're going to apply De Moivre's theorem. So let's follow our steps. First step, sketch. So we're going to sketch this out. Always sketch it out. So we have 8i. 8i is going to lie somewhere. Oh, apologies. I've gone along the wrong axis. Go again. So 8i is going to sit up along here to this point here. Now, although you might be thrown, this actually makes your life much easier because you should know that if that's the argument theta, that theta is actually just 90 degrees. We're going to work in radians, so that means pi over 2. And the modulus is going to just be 8, because you don't even need to use your formula, your a squared plus b squared under the square root, because it's vertical. So any vertical or horizontal complex numbers are super, super easy to work with. So that means polar form would be 8 cos of pi over 2 plus i sine pi over 2. And that would be polar form. But I want to go one step further and get general polar form. So that means putting in those rotations. And we're going to put in some number of note rotation. We don't know. So we're going to have pi over 2, and I'm going to put this in another colour so we can see it, plus 2n pi, plus i sine two, oh, pi over 2, plus 2n pi. Okay. So that is our general form of um, z cubed and now we're going to work backwards like we have done so we're going to come along and we're going to say that well then z is equal to 8 cos of pi over 2 plus 2n pi plus i sine pi over 2 plus 2n pi and that's all going to be I think I'm missing, um, just missing a bracket here so close the bracket square bracket and that's all going to be to the power of a third and this is where we can apply De Moivre's theorem so we're going to have 8 to the power of a third so if you need help with that at uh, page 20 of your log tables so cause of Actually, you do this in a different colour, so I'll keep that up so we can see it. So you're applying a third as a power on the modulus, and then you're doing a third of pi over 2 plus 2n pi 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 plus
pi over 2 plus 2n pi plus i sine 1 third pi over 2 plus 2n pi and we'll just do a little bit of clean up to make it a bit easier that's the cubed root of 8 so that gives me 2 and we get cos of pi over 6 plus 2n pi over 3 now you can simplify that into a single fraction but there's absolutely no need and both of these angles should always match don't just assume though use it as a chance to double check your work but that should and um, they should always match so now we have an answer for z but it's in terms of n so we have um, remember we started with z to the power of 3, which means there's three answers that we want. So we're going to take that general solution and we're going to sub in values for n in order for us to get three different answers. So now that I have the general solution, I'm going to get my three answers by subbing in in the first instance n is equal to 0. So that will give me the answer that z is equal to 2 cos pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6 but in this case unless you're specified otherwise we are going to convert into um, back into rectangular form so a plus bi so if we convert that back into rectangular form we get root 3 plus i so that's by putting 2 cos of pi over 6 into your calculator, get root 3, and 2 sine of pi over 6 into your calculator, and you get 1. You can also use page 13 to help you do that. If you're using your calculator, just make sure it's in radian mode. So then the second answer we're going to have is 2 cos of, now we have a little bit of work to do here, pi over 6 plus, it ends up being 2 pi over 3 plus i sine and the same angle, pi over 6, plus 2 pi over 3. And if we were to clean that up, it ends up being 2 cos, and when we work with this, we get 5 pi over 6, plus i sine 5 pi over 6, and then into the calculator, and we'll be able to work out that's minus root 3 plus i is n equals 1. And the last one we're going to do is n equals 2. So that'll give us our three answers. Well, we always start with n equals 0, so no rotation. So the answer just as is. And we get z equals 2 cos of pi over 6 plus. So this is 2 times 2 times pi. So that's 4 pi over 3 plus I sine pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 3 and cleaning that up we get 2 cos of this works out as 9 pi over 6 plus I sine oh I should actually simplify that so that's 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2. And then into the calculator and we get 0 minus 2i. So the three roots. Sorry, I'm not going through it. So the three roots of z cubed is equal to 8i. Are these answers here example 11 so we're looking at the nth root of complex number and this time um it's just a little bit more difficult because we're going to have a little bit more work with the polar form than we did in the last question so to get a polar form we're going to sketch it out so my sketch gives me something like this so minus 2 minus 2 root 3, there is my reference angle A, 
creating my right angle triangle here. Here's my adjacent side. That adjacent side is 2. My opposite side, that's 2 root 3. First thing, oh sorry, now actually I'll put in here first my theta. That's my arguments. First thing I'm going to work out is my modulus. The modulus is the length or the distance from the center 0, 0. We get that as the length of, and in this case it's actually z squared, and that is the square root of a squared plus b squared. So that works out as 4. And then the second thing we need to do polar form is the argument. So the argument is the angle going from the positive sense of the x-axis. And um, before I can do that, we're going to need to work out A, the reference angle. So the tan of A using the triangle we have in our sketch is opposite over adjacent, which is just going to give us root 3. So that gives us an angle A pi over 3 and if you're still struggling with your radians you can kind of keep the degrees running side by side to help you and that would be 60 degrees so using page 13 and um, in your log tables to help you as much as possible and that will help not only with finding out the actual values that we need of the angles but it'll help you with the radian degree conversion so keeping that straight in your head so now I have a and if we look at the diagram to work out theta I'm thinking in degrees and I'm saying it would be 180 plus 60 we are working in radians so when I come back I'm talking theta is equal to instead of 100 oh apologies instead of 180 degrees we're talking about pi plus 60 degrees pi over 3 so that gives us an argument of 4 pi over 3 so that means in polar form we have z squared is equal to 4 cos of 4 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 pi over 3. So we're working backwards. So I want to get z on its own. Usually we talk about the square root, but instead, because I want to use demovers here, I'm going to write it as an indice or a power, and the square root as a power is power of a half. We should be really familiar with that one from all our work in calculus. So power of a half. Now before I actually apply that power of a half, I'm going to need to get two different answers. So how I get those two different answers is I then have to talk about this as the general solution. So I need to understand um, the general polar form. And to do that, I'm going to actually put in my rotations so it's going to be cos of, okay, hopefully we won't run out of space. So it's going to be 4 pi over 3 plus 2n pi plus i sine 4 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. And we're still talking about is all to the power of a half. So now that we have our general um, polar form, we're going to apply them over. It's really important that you apply them over after you have general, after you have added in that rotation. So it has to be in general polar form first. So we have four, it's going to be to the power of a half. And then what we're going to get is cos and it'll be a half times our angle, which is 4 pi over 3 plus 2n pi, so our rotation, plus i sine, and we have a half times 4 pi over 3 plus 2n pi. And that is like a general answer. We're going to clean it up a little bit more. So power of a half, same as square root. So 2 cos, cleaning this up, we get 2 pi over 3 plus 
n pi. So all I'm doing there is I'm multiplying the half into that bracket, half times 4 pi over 3, and a half times 2 n pi. So we have i sine, and it's 2 pi over 3 plus n pi. So that's just a cleaned up version. So in order to get my two answers, we're going to get n equals 0. So sub in n equals 0. That gives us, let's keep my z, z equals 2 bracket cos of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine 2 pi over 3. And you can go to your calculator and do that, and we get minus 1 plus root 3 i. Second answer, we're going to sub in n equals 1. We have a little bit of extra cleanup to do here. So z is equal to 2 cos of, we get 2 pi over 3 plus 1 times pi, so just pi, plus i sine. 2 pi over 3 plus pi. I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. So I'm going to get this angle and combine them. So cos of 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 5 pi over 3. And again, that can go into your calculator because we always want to give our answer back in rectangular form. And we get 1 and then minus root 3. So our two answers for z are minus 1 plus root 3i and 1 minus root 3i. And you'll notice that, and it's not a coincidence, those numbers and the way that they are. Because there is only um, two different solutions, they effectively mirror each other. So we get that minus 1 plus root 3 and then a plus 1 and a minus root 3. So this is our final example we're going to see and um, this is an exam question. So z is equal to minus root 3 plus i um, and that's a complex number where i squared is equal to minus 1. First thing they want us to do is to write z in polar form. So first thing we're going to do to do polar form is we're going to do our sketch. So our sketch is just to give us an idea where this complex number is. So when I go to sketch this, it's minus root 3 plus i, which brings me somewhere over here. The angle I'm then working with, so my reference angle is a. And completing the triangle, I have an adjacent side here, which will be root 3 and an upside here, which will be 1. So remember that i is just another way to say 1i. But the angle I actually want is um, the argument, which is from the positive sense of the x-axis. So it's this one here. So two things in order to write a complex number in polar form. The first thing I need is my modulus. That is the length or the distance from 0, 0. And the formula for this is or. It's written like, just like our distance will be with two straight lines. And it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. So basically the real part, so the a squared plus b squared. Note that the i does not go in. So that's the square root 3 plus 1, which is 4. And that gives us an answer of 2. The second thing that we need to know in order to do polar form is our argument. So in order to get the argument, we're going back to what we know about trigonometry in our unit circle. I'm going to work first with the reference angle A. The tan of that is opposite over adjacent. So working that through, we get pi over 6, or if you prefer to kind of keep your head in degrees, that's 30 degrees. So for these kind of questions, you should have page 13 um, open in front of you. So you can really clearly see that link between degrees and radians. So that is my reference angle, but we're actually looking for the argument. If it's easier, you can look at the argument in degrees. So it would be 180 degrees minus um, the 30 degrees, which would 
end up giving us 150 degrees. We want to work in radians, so that would be theta is equal to 180 degrees is pi minus pi over 6, and that gives us theta is equal to 5 pi over 6. This gives us our polar form as z equals to cos of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. If you wanted to do that in degrees, you could leave it as 150 because it doesn't say anything. Um, I couldn't really penalise you for using the degrees, but it is good practice to work with your radians through any questions you can. Because in, a, in an exam situation, if you have to use radians, there's no way around it. So the second part is then asks us to use de Mauvais' theorem to find z4 z to the power of 4 giving your answer in the form a plus bi. So we have z as a complex number and now we're going to do z to the power of 4. So from the previous part we know that z is equal to 2 bracket cos of 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 5 pi over 6. We want to come along and do that to the power of 4. So we're going to take this and go to the power of 4 and we're going to use de Mauvais. So z to the power of 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 4. And then we have cos of the power in 4 times 5 pi over 6 plus i sine 4 times 5 pi over 6. So do a little bit of clean up on this. Z to the power of 4 is equal to that's 16 cos of, and you can clean this up, that's 10 pi over 3 plus i sine, and again you can clean this up. Uh, double check while you're doing that that you are um, that you have the matching argument in both the cos and the sine. Now it's important to note here that actually the angles are bigger than 2 pi so you don't want theta any bigger than 2 pi so it should be less than 2 pi. Um, because we're going to bring it back to rectangular form it's actually not going to make that much of a difference but in another question it could and um, if you prefer using page 13 you might want to bring it back so if you're using your calculator you can put this in straight away so we do I just tried it out what we're going to put into the calculator 16 cos 10 pi over 3 so I'm just multiplying out the bracket plus I am going to leave that there 16 sine 10 pi over 3 so remember you can't put i into the calculator so you're doing 16 cos 10 pi over 3 and that gives us minus 8 and uh, plus i and 16 sine 10 pi over 3 gives us 8 root 3 and that i can be put at the end but generally when we have a square root or a third we put the i in front if you wanted to at this point do a little bit of clean up you'd take away 2 pi so 10 pi over 3 minus a rotation, so 2 pi, um, and that would leave us with 4 pi over 3. So you could work with 4 pi over 3 instead of 10 pi over 3. It would be the same result. If we didn't want it back in rectangular form, if we wanted to give it in a polar form, um, we would need to take away that rotation to tidy up the angle. So the last part of this is a very interesting piece. It says using the fact that z is one of the roots, um, or otherwise, so using any other method, find all the other roots of z to the power of 4. So if we want to work out, so basically what we end up with is z to the power of 4 has an answer, and we've worked that out, and that answer is minus 8 minus i 8 root 3 
and we could go backwards by doing power of a quarter. Now you'd say, well, we just get back to Z, but Z would just be one of the roots. Given that there are four roots, we would then have to use the general form, the general polar form, apply the power of a quarter and work through it. So just like our previous example, but because it's power of four, we have a very special little piece um, it's a very interesting little thing that happens and that we can utilize as we're going through. So because I know that Z is a root and that is minus three plus I, I'm going to use that fact like they told me in the question using that fact. I'm not going to use the otherwise. I'm going to use that fact to find the other roots. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a plot. So here is my minus root three plus i. So I'm going to just dot that there and I'm going to call that z. So there's going to be four of these which means that they're going to be equally spaced around a rotation or around 360 degrees which means they're all going to be 90 degrees apart and this only happens when there are four answers. So when we're looking for um, basically an answer to the power of a quarter like in this question and they're all going to rotate anti-clockwise and at a 90 degree angle because I'm going to have to fit four of them in. So there's my four answers. Now that's great um, drawing it out but then how do I get those? So at the very start we would have looked at how graphically we will get this 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation and to get it we would have taken um, our z I'll just go over I don't know how dark that is and we would have multiplied it by i so this is i z this is i squared z and this is i cubed z so effectively we end up creating a circle that has a radius equal to the length equal in length to the modulus of z and where all of these roots are equally spaced throughout the circle that will always be true the roots will always be equally spaced around the circle but because it is four roots they're going to be equally spaced at 90 degree angles and we can use that idea of i i multiplying by i gives us a rotation anti-clockwise so basically my answer is going to be z i z and when you work that out we get i times minus root 3 plus i and that becomes minus i sorry minus 1 minus root 3 i i squared z is just minus 1 times minus root 3 plus i which is root 3 plus i root 3 minus i 